Income Tax 2021-2022 Software Example Payments. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into Income Tax 2021-2022. Lacert Tax Software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov, starting point, single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, 100,000 W-2 income, 12,550 standard deduction, getting us to the 87,450 taxable income, mirroring that over here on the formula for our tax formula, 100,000 coming from the W-2 income area we then have the 12,550 to get us to the taxable income 87,450 we're then going to rely on the software to calculate the tax at the 1515 and then we're really focused down here on the payments now remember that when you're looking at this formula you would think the more complex area would be the top half which is in essence an income statement to get to the taxable income and then you calculate the tax on that which is actually quite complex because as we saw in the past it's going to be a progressive tax system so there's deviations from that that's why we rely on the software to do that calculation oftentimes when we're double checking here and then down here you would expect that you would just have the payments but as we saw there's going to be more complexity down here and one being that we have the credits that are going to be commingled with the payments. Credits are similar to deductions in that they're good, but one credit versus one deduction, the credit, I mean, one dollar verse of credit versus one dollar of deduction, the credits would be better or more beneficial because if the deduction was taken up here, it would just lower the taxable income. But if you get a credit, you might get the full amount of the credit. Uh, in terms of a benefit, the full dollar of benefit. And then we've got the credits that are broken out between the items up here, which are non-refundable, and the ones down here, which are refundable. And so we'll talk about those credits more in a future presentation, but they're kind of co-mingled with the payments because they have a similar kind of benefit to us as the payments. That's why it gets a little bit more confusing down here on the second page of the return or the bottom half of the formula. We also have the other taxes, which includes say self-employment tax down here that we have to add into place that we've talked about in prior presentations. And now we're looking at down here, the payments and refundable credits, but we're focusing just in on, in essence, the payments. The refundable credits are similar in terms of the, the, the effect on the actual tax equation. That's why they're kind of grouped together down here. So when we're talking about payments, first payment we're usually thinking of is gonna be the withholdings. That's where we will start. If I go back to the tax return on the second page then, we've got the tax calculated, and then we're really kind of going down here to line uh, 25 for our payments. So notice you got a bunch of activity here. You've got, you've got the non-refundable child tax credit. We'll talk about that later. And then you've got the other taxes, including the self-employment tax. So then we're going to be down here on the federal income tax withheld line 25, starting with the W-2s. So the W-2s is the most straightforward kind of withholding. We would typically see during the working years, you might have a W-2 that would look something like this. We would have the income in line one, withholdings then typically being in line two. The Social Security and Medicare also withholdings involved, but we would be focused in on line two, the federal income tax withholding in general for the federal income tax calculation, of course. So if I went back to my documents and we said that we had wages of the 100,000, let's just put in an amount that we'll just make up here for the federal income tax, 20,000. We also might have state with tax withholdings, but I won't get into the state at this point. So we're gonna jump back on over. And that of course would then be populated here at the 20,000. So now we've got then the payment of the 20,000, versus the tax of the 1515, which would have the difference of the 4,985, which we have the overpayment of. If I go back to my formulas here, then we've got the W-2 withholding, which would be calculated here. And then I've got my payments, which I put on the right-hand side from W-2, which I said was 20,000. That would then pull back into the first page of our formula. And so now we've got the 49, eight five four nine eight five in terms of the overpayment now of course you could have multiple w-2s so if i went back on over here and i said okay i've got two w-2s w two two 
and then I said I had another 50,000 here and we had another let's say let's say uh, 5,000 of withholdings then I can go back on over and I would say okay now my income is up to 150,000 12,550 standard deduction we're at the 137,450 for the taxable income if I go back on over here I could say okay I'm going to add that to my formula second one was 50,000 that brings us up to the 150 and then I'm going to imagine in box two of my second W2 that we had the withholdings of what did I say what did I say I can't remember what I said I said something but I can't remember 5,000 5,000 was withheld so I'm going to say W22 5,000 that adds up to 25,000 that would pull into the first page of the form 1040 on the withholdings getting us then to the 10 878 so I'm going to go back on over that's not quite right because my taxes are different now taxes calculated at 27009 so we've got the tax 27009 and then I've got the other tax calculated here where did that come from all right I removed that so we got the 27009 that gives us the 25,000 on the payment so now we've got amount 02009 so if I go back on over, we've got then we've got then the amount that is owed here, the 2009, and we have an issue on schedule three because now we, we had we increased or we went over the cap for social security. So we got to deal with this uh, four four nine for the social security that that was adjusted i won't get into that now we talked about social security in the past and there's a cap on it so if you have two w-2s it's possibly that you pay too much into social security but you know we can have two w-2s is the general the general idea we're focusing in on here so the total payments were the twenty-five thousand at that point so that's the w-2s now if they were retired you would expect they might have like 1099 r's which might look something like this so now we don't have the W-2 income. It's likely that if a lot of the income is coming from some time of pension distribution in retirement years, that this is where the withholdings would be reported on box four. You might have state withholdings. You'd have to deal with two depending on the state. So then I can go back on over and I say, okay, what if I had withholdings here? What if my 100,000 distribution code seven, we're gonna say that we, we got distributions of the 100,000, the taxable amount 100,000, and then the federal withholding 20,000 here. If I go back on over to the forms, I go to page one. So now we've got the taxable amount of pensions and annuities instead of W-2 wages. And then we get, we're down to this, this 87,450. Obviously we would probably have a difference in the standard dedu deduction because they would be over the age threshold. So we, we could change the age there, but we're really just focusing in on page two here where we had the 15, 15 calculated, and then now we've got the withholdings this time in line uh, 25B instead of 25A, but it's a similar concept. Now, obviously here you might have multiple, you know, uh, 1099Rs as well with multiple kind of withholdings. So you gotta be watching out for that more, especially for, of course, people that are over the retirement age. So now let's imagine a situation where you had gambling winnings of some kind. So you got a gambling winnings you got a you got a w2g for example which might look something like this so you've got the gambling winnings that are reported box four the federal income tax withheld if there's any withholdings on it then you might report that or you should report that here let's say it was ten thousand so if i go back on over to the forms page number one so now i'm back to my one hundred thousand wages i got fifty thousand flowing in from the gambling winnings and then on page two I'm showing that 10,000 now in 25C, another kind of ref of withholding. So any of those reporting documents that have basically income, you might, you could possibly have withholding. So you want to, of course, double check to see if there's anything in those related uh, withholding, and they would generally be here in 25A, B, or C. Now, if you have the a, a Schedule C type of business you might not be able to have withholdings. So then you got to get into the estimated payments and the estimated payments are going to be important for you to be able to report because they're not going to get the documentation. You got to get that from the client or from your records. You also have to kind of calculate and figure what the estimated payments will be for the following year, which software will typically help you by on doing. 
by basically using the prior year calculation to kind of project forward. But if there's substantial differences in taxes from year to year, then you might have to estimate what the estimated payments would be. So let's say, and also just realize that if, if there was an overpayment in the prior year that, that you had from 2020 and you make estimated payments, instead of getting the refund, you might have applied it then to 2021. So let's say we, we had an overpayment of 1,000 here, and then we're making estimated tax payments. I won't put the date right now, but the date's gonna be, you wanna put the date of the payment here as well. Let's say they paid 2,000 per quarter, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. So then we got two, four, six, eight, nine thousand. So if I go back to my forms, then then I'm saying we got Schedule C income of the one hundred thousand that resulted in all the other stuff we saw with with the self-employment tax, the above the line deduction, sixty four three oh seven taxable income, page two. Now we have the nine thousand nine hundred and We've got the other taxes, self-employment tax, getting us to the 20, 2430. We don't have any withholdings, 25A, B, or C, but rather we have the 9,000 in the line 26 that were the actual estimated estimated payments, which of course isn't enough to, to clear the threshold here. So there is that, we can up it. Let's just pretend it was, we upped it by, let's say we made this, let's say we made this 5,000 five thousand five thousand five thousand and let's say the overpayment was seven let's say ten thousand on the overpayment so that's uh twenty thousand so if i go back on over so what no it's thirty thousand yeah thirty thousand so if i go back on over now we have the tax of the 2430 we made estimated payments of thirty thousand so we've got the overpayment down here of the 5970, 5970. Now just note that you might take that 5970 then and say, I want to apply uh, the, the amount to 2022. And that would mean that next year, this would be part of your first quarter payment. Uh, otherwise you, get, you could just get it refunded to you. You could just say, no, I'm just gonna have it refunded to me to get the refund. So that could be part of your payments from one year to the other. So typically, if you make estimated payments, you've got four estimated payments, uh, and then you've got the rollover from the prior year that could be part of the part of the rollover estimated payment. And the last payment you make, for example, in 2021 uh, might have been made actually in 2022 for the last quarter and applied to 2021. So you got to get an idea of when those payments are made and that cutoff date can be a little bit confusing. So when you get that from your own records or from a client, you gotta make sure which tax year did this payment get applied to because you might've paid it in, for example, 2021, but it was applied to the prior year, 2020. You might've paid it in 2022, but it was still applied to the current year that you're working on 2021. So you gotta be careful on those cutoffs. Now, then we have these items down here, the earned income credit. These are other credits that are refundable. And this is what I mean by them being kind of commingled down here. Because these are refundable, that you could still get a re you could still get money even if you didn't owe any tax. That's why they're kind of commingled with the payments down here. So we'll talk more about them later, but they're but they're just to point them out now why they're kind of mushed together in this calculation. Earned income credit, the non-taxable combat. We've got the refundable child tax credit. We've got the American Opportunity credits. We got the recovery rebate credits, and then we're going to be adding this up. So we got the total other payments and refundable credits now, including that thirty thousand payments that we made as well as some of these credits, which we'll talk about in a future presentation.